Alrighty. Got it? Is it recording? It's recording. It's Friday, people. Y'all know what the deal is on Fridays. Y'all should already have the beer off the ice. Put the bud in the bowl. Let's get this shit going. It's the weekend, baby. And what a weekend it is. I don't, uh, I don't have any beer with me. So, again, I'm hitting the bourbon. I'm hitting the big house bourbon. So, uh, mix a little bit of that up there. Put that back on. Yeah, I'd say we'd made a dent in that thing. Uh, anyway, let me knock everything over here. It's Friday. What else is going to happen? So, bring that beer up out of the bud. Mm. Put that bud in the bowl. And spark it up. Because you know it's Friday and that's what the deal is. Anyway. Ooh, tasty. Now y'all know y'all know that's not pot because uh because that's illegal here. That's for special effects. That's what that is. Hey Sparky, how you doing, buddy? Sparky Dunk just joined us on Discord. He just uh just got here, so we appreciate him tuning in and listening in. Anyway, it's Friday, baby. How you like this shirt? Ditch Putin's bitch. Ditch Putin's bitch. That was sent to me by Dana Haverman from Royal Palm Beach, Florida. Baby, let me get on the right camera here so I won't be staring off into the distance. Dana said she has been a, 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 a family member since I first started on Facebook back in the dark and hopeless days. And uh, she, uh, she uh, wasn't happy when Donnie the boy slithered into the White House, a little maggot. Uh, anyway... A great shirt. I love it. Thank you, Dana. I appreciate that. Well, that's the only mail I got. I have been in contact with one of our Blue Dot family members. Stephanie Dean, down in Florida, is uh, is currently in the hospital. I spoke to her today. Uh, she was sounded tired, but she was in good spirits. Uh, Stephanie has some issues going on with her heart, and the doctors are going to be working on her, but she is in... Holmes Regional Medical Center down in Melbourne, Florida. And uh, if you want to send her a card or any way, anything, uh, her room number is C331-2. C331-2. Uh, so I guess she's got a roommate. And that's in Melbourne, Florida. So if you want to drop her a card, she's going to be in there for a little while because they're going to run some tests on her first so for some other issues. You know how doctors are. They get hold of your ass. They want to check out everything. But we want him to do a good job on Stephanie. She's a big family member, and we want her to take care of herself. So, Stephanie, get well, baby. Get out of them hospitals. Them people ain't no good, I'm telling you. Uh, I like to stay far away from them, but we wish Stephanie all the best and, and get well soon, dear. Anyway, what's been going on? Well, Donnie came down. Donnie came down yesterday. I was sitting out here in the shop. Oh, baby, I could smell it. I could smell the air, take a little tinge of crap in it. A little, a little sewer smell in the air when he flew over, and he went on down to, uh, down to, uh, down to the border. Uh, in, uh, oh man, I forgot what town he went to. It'll come to me in just a second. Right down, uh, McAllen. I'm sorry, McAllen, Texas. Went down there to meet with the border patrol. Border Patrol sat him up in front of the cameras there with all these drugs and money, stacks of money and guns and all this shit they got at the border checkpoint. They got it at ports of entry. They even took him out to a section there, there where there is a wall and showed him the tunnel where they sneak it through. Because, you know, a wall, just like Donnie says, been around before the wheel. Ah! Oh, Man, yeah, the wheel's still rolling, so the wall still works. Are you shitting me? That's that's his mentality. He's got him in that medieval end. That's I don't know what he learned at the Wharton School of Finance, but it damn sure wasn't world history. But anyway, he came down to the border to just boom ba for his national emergency. Yesterday, yesterday he was out there. I will probably for for sure, almost definitely, declare a national emergency and build a wall because. Because that's Donnie. That's what Donnie says. The king says it. It must be true. And then today, 
just like every other day, this man opens his mouth. The next day is another story. I just saw him on TV a little while ago. I just saw him. He's not going to do it right now. He's not going to do it right now. Although I have that oh, absolute right. I have the absolute right to do it. I'm not going to do it right now because, well, because I get sued and they'll take it to the Ninth Circuit Court. And you know the Ninth Circuit Court will lose there. will win it there. Supreme, are you shitting me? He's coming up with a whole nother zis boom ba to play in front of his little minion, minions down there. So Fox Spews, Bullshit Mountain will have some sound bites to play for their little little cockroaches out there. They want Donnie's wall. It, Donnie's wall is important to them because it, it, it thrives in their life. That kind of hate, that type, that kind of divisiveness, it, it, is, it thrives in the, in the Republican Party now. You heard Donnie down here? I don't want to forget this part. He was talking there, and he was talking about the vehicles that they have down in Mexico. They're, they're tremendous vehicles. They're powerful vehicles. They're huge, and they they have big engines, and they, they drive real. Are you shitting me? You little turd. You make shit up, pull it out of your ass, and try to sell it to the American people. You know, there's a lot of areas there. $1.6 billion last year was approved for the border funding for his little wall. For four for his little wall, and that money was, was supposed to go to Hildago County, Hildago County down here in Texas to build 25 miles of wall, fencing, whatever you want to call it. It was fencing. Donnie's little project gave him $1.6 billion. It has not been spent yet. But you know where they want to put that, that, that fence there? A mile from the freaking river. So you're giving up a mile of U.S. territory. Because if you put the fence a mile away from the river, well, for one thing, all them people that own that property, well, tough shit. If you live on that side of the tough shit, fend for yourself. We can't go around the wall because this here is the border right here. You're giving away a mile all the way up and down the Rio Grande River. You're seceding that to Mexico. Because Mexico won't pay for the wall, you decided to give them a whole bunch more property here. The Rio Grande River is yours. Take care of it. That's Donnie. Donnie has no freaking idea where that wall would go. You know, down here near Brownsville, uh, Deer McAllen, I can't remember exactly what it is, but oh, in Mission, in Mission, Texas. It might have been where he went. I can't remember right now. Out in Mission is the National Butterfly uh, Sanctuary down there. And that wall is, is slated to go through and cut 70% of that refuge will be on the other side of the border, essentially giving it to Mexico. Now, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, right-wing nut jobs who don't give a shit about butterflies. Nobody cares about butterflies. We like to look at them and, oh, look at there. But it's just another indication of what they're willing to give up. There's no, there's no sanctuary. There'll be state parks. There'll be, there'll be public lands and private lands cut off by this fence. And that ain't going good over good down here in Texas, baby. There's, there's landowners, baby. They own that property, you idiot. And they're not going to give it up so easily. Anyway, I just, I, I just really got pissed off at his little shit. Uh coming down here and, and putting on a dog and pony show for his little his little wall, his little monument to racism and and, and, and white nationalism, which I don't want to piss Steve King off. And if we ain't talked about him enough since I started doing this shit, it's ridiculous. This man's been office in elected in Iowa's fourth district, which is up in the northwest corner of Iowa, if you're wondering. He has been elected since 2013, he is a he is a white supremacist. He's a he's a neo-Nazi. He's he's a disgusting creature. And now he's upset because the words white nationalist, the words white supremacist, and Western civilization are all bad words. Where when did they become so so offensive to people? White supremacy? When did that become offensive? A long time before the Civil War, you moron. 
This guy is a this guy Steve King. He's the one that he's the he's the congressman that puts a rebel flag on his desk. He plants that thing right in front of his right in front of his desk. Thinks that the only way, if anything happened in the world, that we could rebuild civilization is if there were white people, because white people are the only ones that can. Are you shitting me? That's who Steve King is. That's who Iowa's fourth district keeps re-electing. Why don't you drive around that district? You all might as well hang out the Nazi flag in front of your house. For those that do support that man in that district. Won't be all of them. He didn't win a landslide. I understand he only won by 3%, but he won this time again. After the previous bullshit, that racist asshole has, has let come out of his mouth. Steve King is about nothing but white people, and he is the one that is concerned about the wall down there along with the rest of them up there in Iowa. They are really concerned, and we need a What the hell? Are you finding them in the cornfield? Because I don't think so. I don't think so. Just face it. You're a racist asshole if you think this world, this wall is what this country needs. But there's no shortage of them. And there's no shortage of them in the Republican Party nowadays. They've made a home in there. Here in Texas, the vice chairman of the Republican Party faced a vote yesterday from the Texas Republicans to decide if Dr. Shahid Sharif Shafi, Shahid Shafi, doctor, would remain vice chairman because he is a Muslim. Not for any other reason. It was plainly because he was Muslim, he could not hold that position in the Republican Party in Texas. Yeah, we have racist assholes down here. 49 of them directly. The vote was 49 to 139. He retained his seat, thank goodness. But 49, 49 Texas Republicans voted to take his seat away for no other reason than his religion. So the next time the Republicans are out there screaming about religious freedoms, you can bet your ass they're talking about Jesus. And if you're not into Jesus, well, screw you and the rest of your religions. That's what those 49 people said. Those 49 disgusting Republicans in my state that see fit to remove a man because of his religion. So, yeah, we're, we have racist assholes all across this country. All across this country. They used to keep their little shit hidden. They keep, used to keep their mouth shut. But they don't do that anymore. And there's a big reason why. And that's because the biggest racist asshole we've seen in this country is a long, in a long time is now sitting in the White House. He is sitting in our house. He wants his wall, not for the protection of America. Are you shitting me? There were only six people on a terrorist watch list stopped at the border in, in, in Mexico. There were 72 in Canada. There was over 2,000 at the airport. Are you shitting me? Why ain't we building a wall in Canada? Because it's got white people. That's why. There are white people up there. They ain't brown people. They're white people. We might let them in. An 18-year-old Saudi Arabian girl was allowed into Canada. She was seeking asylum from Saudi Arabia. So Canada seems like a 70-something terrorists come from Canada. Six on our board. We're going to spend all the money on the border. And he was out there yesterday again cranking up. No, there's another massive, bigger than anything you've ever seen before in your life, caravan building up in the in Honduras, and we're going to stop it. We're trying to stop it, but hey, we don't know. And the only thing that will stop it is, is my big, big wall. There are people suffering today because they're not going to get paid today. That throws their whole life in turmoil. 
when you don't know it's coming, baby, at least they had a week. I didn't know it was coming last month. I got a letter two days before my payday. Sorry, John, you're not getting it. So, yeah, your thoughts turn more to immediate things, not the bullshit that caused the problem, not the wall. It's you're not getting a paycheck. How are you going to take care of your family? That's your thoughts. How are you going to pay your bills? Donnie Boy does not care. Donnie Boy was, was raised with a silver spoon up his ass. He n doesn't know what it means to want for anything. He will shit on the values of this country, the values that you hold dear, that I hold dear, that the common person down here that has to make a living every day cares for. I wrote a piece last night. I can walk into the pawn shop and give up a piece of my life to feed my family. I will not turn on my values. But he's expecting us to. He is expecting us all to turn our back on everything that's that we hold dear. To build a monument to Donnie. I've seen some guy on, t on the video talking about Donnie always wanted the big, big, tall buildings with his name on them so he could build it like a big, hard prick so he could brag about it. Now he wants a big, hard prick laying down with his name on it. That's all it is. It's a monument to his prick. That's all it is. It's not a national emergency. There was no national emergency for the two years the Republicans held the House. There was no money for the wall when the Republicans had the House and the Senate. But now... Now, baby, now it's a, it's a national emergency. And where are they going to get the money from? FEMA, baby. You, you, your house got burned down out in California. Too bad. Puerto Rico, you, you got all torn. Too bad, man. Texas down here in, in Rockport. Well, we're just sorry about that. We have to build a wall. I don't know how long he is going to let this shutdown go on. It hit a new record today, baby, and that's that makes him proud. That's the kind of shit that makes him proud. I got the longest shutdown in American history. I'm in the history books. Oh, you're in the history books, Donnie, for being a traitor, for being a con man, a liar, a cheap piece of scum who sells this country's values for a nickel, baby. Collaborate with Russia? You bet your ass he did. Collusion is just the littlest part of it. He sold us out, baby. The Republican Party needs to be damn well ashamed of itself for allowing that little cockroach into their party. But they suffer even worse by allowing it to continue. Hell, the House and the Senate have gone home. The next time they're going to reconvene is, th is Monday afternoon. Monday afternoon. So the hell with you people not getting paid this weekend. They're not that important because everybody went home. Ditch the bitch. Ditch the bitch and Mitch. Ditch the bitch, Donnie, and Mitch. Because Mitch has turned his, his part of the three legisl the three branches of our government, one of them has now been turned over to Donnie by Mitch McConnell. We don't have a check and balance. We have an, a, a better in there. Whatever Donnie wants, I'm not going to put anything on the floor. Nobody gets paid until Donnie is happy. That's what Mitch McConnell is saying. One of the richest, set the richest senator in in our house, in our legislation. From one of the poorest states. Go figure. When is Kentucky going to get wise to the fact that you have been conned by a by a scum man, sucking turtle looking piece of shit? That way is just as soon watch your family suffer if he doesn't get his way. Biggest tax cut in history? That's what the Republicans were there for. And where are we now, baby? Nine. Senators, nine Republican senators from Utah, Arkansas, Ohio, Iowa, Mon Montana, Georgia, Wyoming, and Idaho. Nine of them have put together a bill and they're putting it forth. These are Republicans. 
They put it forward to prevent future government shutdowns, to prevent an idiot from shutting down the government and throwing their little temper tantrum. You know who brought you the shutdown, baby? Ronald Reagan. That's who did it. And the Speaker of the House, what was his name? Little guy that divorced his wife while she had cancer. He's on his third wife. What he, damn it, the name's not coming to me right now. Anyway, that's the guy that weaponized it, used it as a political tool. And now that's exactly what we're seeing here. This is a political tool. There's no crisis. The only crisis Donnie has is Ann Coulter's mad at him. Rush Limbick is mad at him. Sean Hannity is mad at him. And Lindsey Graham is just having so many vapors back and forth. He's just swapping. Last week it was no, no national emergency. Today, Lindsey Graham is out there saying, oh, yes, President, declare a national emergency right now and take the funds from the poor people who suffered. Hey, Lindsay, shove it up your ass ever since John McCain died. You don't know what way you're going, you little idiot. You're just blowing the wind either way. Yes, I'll kiss his ass. No, I'll be strong. No, I'll kiss his ass. We are desperately in need of Republicans that have strong legs and a clear voice. People that aren't afraid of a, of a con man, a lying, stinking sack of shit. You bring your name down every time you stand up there with him. We have a long way to go in this country, but it's not only here. You know, I've seen a, a, a post by Madeline Bell. Madeline Bell lives in Spain. She's a great singer from the 60s, and she lives in Spain, but she was just over in Melbourne. Australia, where I saw some pictures that she had posted, but she was on her way to Abu Dhabi, and she was re watching an Aretha Franklin uh, movie, a tribute, uh, a tribute to Aretha Franklin, and she wrote a post that she was upset because there were no, there were no African American, no Black Americans that were asked for input into that show. They had no comments. A bunch of white guys come out there and say, "Oh, yeah, greatest singer you ever heard in your life. Take it from me." It's not that she took offense to it, she said. It just points in another direction in people's minds. The collective minds of this country, the collective minds of the world. They have America in their heart, baby, because they see us suffer. They see us suffering through through a, a nightmare of, of, of a president in our house who is sold out, who, who wishes to be like dictators and, and potentates and strong men, declare everything his personal responsibility. But we can't let that happen, baby. That's how come we stay after it. That's how come these the, 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 the open meeting, open hearing that they're going to start with uh, Michael Cohen it's going to be the first time, and that's what we have to do. We have to have these these hearings that the, that the Congress is going to have on every one of these issues in public so the public can hear, so the public can hear the charges, the evidence against this man because it's not until we produce enough evidence that you are going to force those diehard Steve King Republican white supremacist assholes to turn against him. And that's what it's going to take to get him out. So, I hope that happens soon. Anyway, we're at 9,994 subscribers on our YouTube channel on uh, on YouTube, uh, Blue Dot in Texas. We're very tickled to death that, uh, that we're getting close to 10,000. Uh, when we do, I'll probably go live on YouTube and to celebrate the 10,000 subscribers. So, I don't know when that'll be. But whenever it happens, I'll probably be itching to get on there and tell everybody thank you. This family that we have grown, that, that we care uh, about each other uh, and, and, and try to lift each other up, that's the most important thing this family does. When you see people down in the comments, speak to them. If, if they have the same idea or if you have an opposing view, bring up your whatever it is. Just make contact and make this conversation keep growing because the conversation is what's going to fuel this nation to rise up and put that man out of our house. 
and it can't come soon enough. Anyway, I hit the button, just letting Sparky know I hit the button, because we want to thank all our Patreon members and those that donate through PayPal and whatnot for keeping this going. It means so much nowadays, and, and, and it is essentially what we are running on. So we appreciate that, and uh, our hearts go out to Stephanie Dean. Take care of yourself, dear, and, and to all our Blue Dot family. Uh, it grows every day, baby, so... I'm just so proud when I see how many people are involved in this. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, John Brittle, all that stuff. A Blue Dot in Texas on YouTube. John Brittle on Facebook. John Brittle speaks. Blue Dot family, it grows every day, and that makes me so proud because more and more people are coming into the family, which just means that there's more and more people being involved in, 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 our, in our political uh, debate out here, our our, our, our our wish for a more benevolent nation and, and less of a white supremacist hideaway that so many want to bring here. Anyway, at, uh, at Blue Dot in Texas on Twitter, out my truck window, anywhere else. Last night, now I normally run over to Bob Kincaid Friday on the front porch on Fridays, and I indeed will be there this evening, but I will probably be late because last night my son's girlfriend on her way home, a deer ran out in front of her and nailed the front of her car pretty bad and so i will be going to pick her i took her to work this morning i'll go pick her up this evening when she gets off that's at six o'clock sparky so i'm letting sparky know at the same time uh so i will be on the bob kincaid show later this evening but i will be late i'll just pop in whenever i get back and, and uh, get prepared anyway that's about all i got people y'all take care it's the weekend i'm gonna pop in live sometime on youtube because i know we're gonna hit it pretty soon and uh, that just it making Travis really tickled to death that we're going to hit 10,000. And uh, the only reason we're there, baby, is because people care. People care enough to listen to me. And if you're listening to me, I want to thank you for having the love in your heart to be on this side of the, of the issue. So uh, take care. Anyway, we'll see you all later.